Um, you know, I guess I just want to thank Olcar and the other organizers for putting together this weekend of small business networking. Uh, you know, I think it's a really great opportunity for all these businesses to come together and share their ideas and you know work on ways that we can all kind of make money together. You know, so I think that's really fantastic. And so, but that's what I've, I brought this morning to talk to you about is you know, a business opportunity that you know I hope we can work on together. And so, <clears throat> some of you are probably going to have to share these. Um, Share and be able to, you know, rent it to other people whenever they you know, need it, and we could also use it, you know, ourselves from time to time. So, <clears throat> you know, I think you're so that you're really gonna fucking love your Riyadh timeshare once you know, we get going. Um, and so, you know, some of the things about Riyadh, at least one is, you know, there's a lot of things that you're gonna look at and you're not gonna know what it means. And I think that's, you know, that appeals to, you know, sort of, you know, a creative part of our minds where, you know, we're able to look at something, you don't know what it means, it's Arabic, there's lots of different layers of it, and so, you know, I think that'll be sort of an intellectually stimulating thing for us to, you know, be able to, you know, do while we're there, you know? <laughs> um, and it's all over the place, you know, there's just tons of graffiti everywhere. Um, and, you know, if that's not enough for you, there's also very confusing games to watch, like cricket, which, I mean, maybe someone here, someone here probably knows how to follow a cricket match. I, I don't. So that, you know, if you're not confused enough by the graffiti, you can go watch a cricket match. Um, and the guys that engage in the cricket matches, they're 30% they're of the population of Saudi Arabia are expats, and most of them are from, like, Southeast Asia, the, the Muslims there from poor countries like Pakistan and after prayer on Friday they go to play cricket out in these uh, huge parking lots and stuff. So if anybody has any questions, you know, please feel free to ask because you know I know you know investing in a in a business opportunity it's you know, something what's, you should feel cricket? comfortable about. So what's cricket? <laughs> cricket? Uh, <laughs> like I can I, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Bat um, bat. Whack bats. Whack bats. Whack bats. I try, I try. Um, you're going to see a lot of car accidents when you're in Saudi Arabia. The driving over there is absolutely terrible. People are speeding, they're driving down the wrong way of the street. They'll, they'll be pulling out in front of you. You know, I mean, hopefully, you know, you won't be injured in, oh, when you're over there. I mean, I think probably most of you will just get used to this kind of driving after a while and learn to adapt to the challenges of, you know, the traffic that you're going to encounter once you're there. I mean, things are very orderly here in the United States. You know, they're, it's, you know we're, 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 we're very good drivers. But, you know, over there it's very difficult. You're going to see an awful lot of car accidents. Hopefully you won't be involved in any of them. <coughs> Um, you know, if, you know. I know that, you know, growing up in America, you learn to really love just some really great things about the United States, like Kentucky Fried Chicken, <laughs> McDonald's, yes. and other things like that. <laughs> but so you you're gonna and don't worry, you know, because you know America really is like a global monstrosity. I 
mean, it's everywhere. So, you know, you'll, your Kentucky Fried Chicken, your McDonald's, it'll be there. So, you know, don't worry about that part of it, you know. Um, also, you know, the Saudis love America, and they'll put up displays, <clears throat> and so that, you know, you'll have the things that you're used that you really want, like raisins, you know, the things you associate with America, <laughs> V8. <laughs> so, um, and how do some people in Saudi Arabia feel about the police? Well, they think, fuck the police. <laughs> so, you know, I think there are probably a lot of people here who you know, share that same <laughs> 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 you know, Fuck the police person, you'll find, you'll find your own fuck the police person when you get over there. So, and that's, you know, you'll be able to meet people just like you, so that that'll you know, help you in the transition, you know, once you arrive in that this new space. So, yeah. um, <clears throat> there's a place in Saudi Arabia called, or in Riyadh called Chop Chop Square, and occasionally on Fridays they'll have public executions there. Um, you do not want to get taken there to be executed. So, you know, we're going to have to really talk about the things that you should not do to, so that you can certainly avoid ending up in Chop Chop Square. So, uh, that's definitely something that you're going to want to avoid. <coughs> um, who designed Riyadh? Well, you know, all these petrodollars started funneling into the country. They got super rich in the 60s. And so they brought in this Greek company to help design, you know, the city's expansion. And, uh, you know, they went with the grid pattern, which you know, everybody's familiar with, to sort of, you know, allow their suburbs to develop. So, you know, we uh, bought their oil, they made a bunch of money, they built their suburbs, we took their oil and built our suburbs, you know, because we needed their oil for the gas for these. So that's a nice symbiotic relationship. We both <laughs> helped each other create these suburban environments which have benefited everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, will there be communism? once you're there. there. There will not be communism <laughs> at all, you know. Um, so, but there, there was communism, there were communist parties in Saudi Arabia in the 60s and 70s, which, I don't know, that always seemed kind of amazing, but they were shut down, they were Shia, they were mostly Shia Muslims, and they were shut down uh, sometime in the late 70s because they, they said, hey, we'll shut down if you will release these political prisoners. And so they just disbanded their communist organizations at that point. <clears throat> um, did you enjoy that book, 1984? <laughs> Do you remember that, you know, about the guy whose big brother is always watching him? Uh, <laughs> so, you know, and if you really like that book, you're, you're going to love living in Rio. <laughs> There are pictures all over the place of Big Brother, who just happens to be the king of the country and the prince. And so you're going to see their photos benevolently looking down on you, you know, all the time. So, you know, it's just like that book. So, you know, if you like the book, you're going to really like it. So, um, death is interesting, right? I mean, I think it's something that's interesting to people to think about, you know. <laughs> Um, and so you're going to be able to think about death a lot when you're there because they're, they're dying things, they're, they're dead things. You, know, you go out in the desert, you're going to see dead camels, dead goats, lots of dead stuff. So it'll give you the opportunity to really you know, think about your own mortality and, you know, to sort of, you know, kind of explore that sort of area of thought. You know, so you know, that's a benefit, you know, of having dead things around. <clears throat> um, you know, you're going to encounter some new and different ideas over there. This is uh, a section from uh, a book that I picked up over there. They do have bookstores. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to read a couple sections of, of this. Uh, Neither the contemporary nor the old USA was a faithful sponsor of human civilization. I think a lot of, I mean, there are a lot of people here who agree with that. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this book delves in cognitive analysis. I think that's thinking, right? Cognitive analysis. Focused on the profiles of the infamous international reality, a rebuttal to the logic of the nasty American politics, which always starts and ends from the strategy of the abyss. The abyss strategy. Towards creating nothingness entities. Usually secreted by history and its cycles, but it ravages them soon enough. You know, I think there's, there's some parts missing to that, but, you know, it kind of, it, it makes some sense. Um, and there are lots of cats, so if you love cats, you know, you're, you're going to love it. I don't really have anything else to add. Um, and, you know, how much Tupac graffiti have you seen in America? I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen any Tupac graffiti in America at all. You know, here you, know, you have the greatest rap artist in the history of, of hip, American hip-hop, and he's not really appreciated. You know, I mean, I guess he's not appreciated as much here, I think, as he is in Riyadh. So, you know, you're going to be in an environment that, you know, respects American culture, I think, maybe more than we do here. So, another benefit to living in Saudi Arabia. Um, are things on fire in Saudi Arabia? <laughs> not really. <laughs> um, aren't you tired of the internet? I mean, everybody is just sick of the internet, right? I mean, it's, just, uh, it's always trying to take your money, um, you know, uh, make you install cookies or you know, make you join something or look at something. I mean, everybody's saying that, well, you know, in Saudi Arabia, the government controls the internet so that, you know, you won't end up going to websites that you shouldn't be visiting in the first place. So that, you know, that's a really helpful, you know, side benefit of living in a country like that. Um, and, you know, once you get over there in Riyadh to, to the timeshare, uh, you'll be following in the footsteps of some other interesting Westerners, uh, the Philby family. John Philby uh, worked with King Sal, helped to sort of found uh, modern Saudi Arabia, and uh, he converted to Islam, married a Saudi wife, uh, and I guess from his from a previous marriage, he gave birth. His son, he didn't give birth. Uh, his <laughs> wife did. It's an amazing place to tell you. Uh, don't know what's going to happen. Uh, no, but his, and then his son was Ken Philby, who was a British intelligence officer who ended up being a KGB spy. So, you know, that's a, that's a pretty wild family. I mean, so, you know, you're, 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 you're following, following in their footsteps. Um, one of the nice things about Saudi Arabia is that uh, the monuments looks the monuments there look like the thing that they are. You know, it's not it's kind of confusing, abstract sort of you know art. You know, if, if it's a teapot, there's a teapot. You know, or there's a coffee cup, or there's a graph. You know, so that you know you don't have to you know sit back and wonder about you know the complexity of things and just kind of complicate things like art can do sometimes. You know, and so you know I think that's. That's a comforting thing. Um, um, you know, it's also comforting to use the toilet outside from time to time. You know, it's especially like living here out in the country. It's nice to sit out under the stars and go to the bathroom. But um, in in Riyadh, there's a palace that was built for King Saud's sister, uh, Princess Nura. It's right downtown, and it's just sort of crumbling there in the middle of the city, like nobody's really taking care of it. It's just sort of there by itself. And it's used as a toilet, you know, so you have this like historical thing, you know, just sort of crumbling. So, you know, it's pretty convenient, you know, so that if you're downtown and you need the bathroom, there's this crumbling palace and you can just throw a pee on. <laughs> so, you know. Um, so, and before we, we leave, you, we all leave, um, you're, you're going to want to look at this list of banned products. And I'm just going to read a couple of them. Uh, greeting cards that make noise. Yeah, I mean, nobody wants a greeting card that makes noise. It's, really not, it's not a bad idea, really. 
Uh, or entertainment devices with hysterical laughter. Nobody wants that either, like a cookie jar that laughs at you when you get it. You know, nobody wants that. So um, you, you are going to want to be drunk a lot when you're over there. And so, but don't worry, I mean, there's, there are Westerners who already know how to make beer and wine and liquor and stuff. So you'll be able to get as drunk as much as you want to. Yeah, no problem there. Um, when I grew up, I remember Tang was a very popular drink. You know, the astronauts took it to the moon, there were commercials about it, and then somewhere, you know, like Tang just sort of disappeared. Well, it's all, it's all in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. So all of Tang. If you really you know, love Tang, you can just find it just about anywhere. Um, You know, and one of the one of the pastime pastimes that I hope that you know we can sort of engage in when we get over there is uh, exploring these kind of abandoned uh, mansions and stuff that are kind of spotted all over the city because in the 50s and 60s these guys got you know, super wealthy, super rich, built these mansions, and then by now they're like, ah, oh, this place sucks, and I need to get like a new fancy place. And so, you know, that's something that we can we can do, right? <clears throat> um, and you know, e everyone is really sick and tired of Christianity. You know, I, mean, I think generally most people think that you know they're kind of over Christianity. Um, well, in Saudi Arabia, the only church, the only known church that's there, is surrounded by a barbed wire fence. So, and it was built, I think, yeah, in the 300s AD. It's one of the oldest churches in the world. And they're like, yeah, we don't want Christianity. We're going to put a fence around it. So that's nice. I mean, if you're an atheist, this could be this could be your place to shine. I really think you know, you really push you know, the Christianity out. You know, so I think that's could be a really nice place for you. Um, you know, no one likes to see uh, swastikas. You know, like when you go about your day, you don't want to see swastikas around. Um, and I think you know, there really aren't that many swastikas you know, in the city being spray painted on walls and stuff. So you, know, you won't be bothered by a, a lot of swastikas. So just know that. Um, are there any psychedelic cities or towns? Um, <laughs> 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 I don't know. I, I really don't. I wish I knew. I, I didn't really develop this one at all. I don't know. What it is. <laughs> the idea. I mean, it looks simple. Right. <laughs> all right. Um, you know, everybody. Everybody likes to go outside, and everybody likes to sit down. You know, those are things that everybody can agree on. And you can sit. There's a lot of places to sit down outside over there, so that you know you'll be able to sit down all you want. So, I, you know, that's a really nice thing to be able to do, you know. So, and that's, that's my sales pitch. I hope that you guys are, are going to enjoy living in Riyadh. I think you're going to like it a lot of it.